I am a Hindu, Amuta Ramesh. Uh, I am a Diploma Engineering. Uh, sorry to asking this question. Hindu believes their religion, Muslim believes their religion, but when both are meeting, Hindu will not trying to convert in Hindu, but the Muslims, why do they are trying to convert in Muslims? Sister, if I understood your question correctly, when Hindus meet Muslims, they don't try and convert the Muslims to Hinduism, correct? Yeah. But when the Muslims meet the Hindus, they try and convert the Hindus to Muslims, correct? Correct. Sister, it is like giving an example. There is a student who goes to school, maybe he's in the 7th standard or 8th standard. There's another student who goes to postgraduate college, postgraduate college, maybe he's doing his master's. Now when they meet, will the school student try and teach the postgraduate or the postgraduate will teach the school student? <laughs> Sister, yes. will, will the school-going student teach the postgraduate student or the postgraduate student will teach the school-going student? Sister, I asked you a simple question, not a difficult question. Sister, have you understood my question? Yeah, yeah. So will a student going to school, will teach a student going to a senior college, postgraduate college? Or no. will a student going to postgraduate college, will teach a student going to the school? Postgraduate only. Correct. So in comparison, when the Muslims, what we believe, we are postgraduates. So when we meet our younger brother who went to school, it's our duty to share knowledge. We don't want to be selfish. I don't want to be selfish. You know, those who are selfish, yeah, the person should not be a graduate. You know, let him suffer. Let him be in school only. If he comes to college, postgraduate, he may take my job away. Those are selfish people. We, mashallah, we are selfless. It's our duty to spread the message of truth. So when we meet a non-Muslim, whether Hindu, whether Christian, whether Buddhist, we tell Ta'ala wila kalmitum sawaim baina bainakum. Come to common terms and we try and educate them. We don't want to degrade them. We try and educate them so that they can become a postgraduate. And both of us will get a good job. The good job is going to Jannah. So we don't alone want to go to Jannah. We want to take our brothers and sisters to Jannah. Sister, do you want to go to Jannah? Do you want to go to paradise? Jannah. Do you want to go to paradise? No. Do you want to go to paradise, yes or no? I want to go to heaven only. Heaven, yes. Another name for heaven is paradise. There are some rules and regulations to go to heaven. As I mentioned in my earlier answer, according to the Hindu scriptures, according to the Quran, according to the Bible, if you want to go to heaven, you have to believe there is one God. You have to believe he has got no images, he has got no photograph, he has got no idols. Sister, do you believe in one God? Yeah, I believe Hindu only. You believe in Hindu God? Do you believe that God has got idols? No, God is not idol. So do you believe in idol worship? Idol worship, I am believing also. You are believing in idol worship? Yes. So if God doesn't have idol, why are you worshipping the idol? Aren't you going against your Hindu scriptures? Your Hindu scripture says in Sveta Svetara Upanishad, chapter 4, verse number 19, and Yajurupa, chapter 32, verse number 3, Na Tasrapati Ma Asti, of that God, there is no image, there is no photograph, there is no painting, there is no statue, there is no sculpture, there is no idol. So do you want to follow your Hindu scriptures or you don't want to follow your Hindu scriptures? No, I want to follow my culture only, Hindu only. Culture, not your religion. My religion is Hindu only, I want to follow. But your Hindu religion is based on Vedas. Have you read the Vedas, sister? No. Isn't your duty you have to read the Vedas? When will you read it? Tomorrow? Or tonight? <laughs> I don't know. I will try. 
I request you, sister, read the Vedas tonight. No, Tum but... No, but why you can't read it tonight? You can read at night, sister, no problem. Veda and Quran, you can read day, you can read night, no problem. My request to you, sister, go home, go on the internet, type the references I gave, Yajurve chapter 32, verse number 3, Sveta Setaro Panisha chapter 4, verse number 19. You know, in Kishan Ganj, I gave a talk in Kishan Ganj just two weeks back, and it was a three day program. First day, it was a talk, second day, open question and session only, third day was talk and question. On second day, and the deadline in India is 10 o'clock on Supreme Court. But when 10 o'clock was over, one intellectual Hindu came and told, you know, Dr. Zakir, what are you trying to do? You're talking about communal harmony, what are you trying to convert, and blah, 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 blah. I believe in, I only believe in Bhagavad Gita, I don't believe in Veda. I wanted to answer him, but the time was up. So I told him, when you come tomorrow, inshallah, I will give you the first chance. The next day, when I gave him the first chance to ask the question, he said, full night, I did research. I phoned the scholars of Hinduism, the pundits, and I was shocked that they said that whatever you told, 100% was correct. In Hinduism, there is one God. Hindu scriptures speak about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He said, I could not sleep the full night. So he made my job easier. So I'm requesting you, sister, that tonight you go home, if you don't have any pundit to ask, you can Google, you know. Shake Google, we say shake Google. A pundit Google, go there, type all the references, try and find out, and tomorrow you can come and ask the question again, sister. My beloved brothers and sisters, this non-Muslim lady, she asked why the Muslims always give da'wah and they ask people to convert to Islam. The other religion like Hinduism and all other religions, they don't call the people of other faith to their religion. Dr. Zakir Naik has beautifully answered the question. And Alhamdulillah, Prophet Muhammad was sent as the last and final messenger. And there will be no other prophets after him. So this work of da'wah is now our responsibility we have to spread this message across the globe prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said balligu anni walau aya spread even if it is a single verse from me and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encouraged the work of dawah in more than one verse in the quran allah says ud'u ila sabili rabbik bil hikmati wal mawizati al hasana call people towards the path of Allah with wisdom and with beautiful teachings and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says that the one who calls people towards Allah he has the best speech he's amongst the best human being so we need to call others to accept Islam because we don't want them to be in hellfire we want them to be in the heaven we want good for them so we want them to come to the force of Islam my beloved brothers and sisters we have to answer the misconceptions of the non-muslims we need to show them the correct path we need to call them to the path of Allah we need to call them to the path of peace and if anyone accepts Islam through your da'wah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you abundantly